What's going on, Sooner Nation? Bet some of you guys are pumped tonight as the Thunder got Game 5 in Oklahoma City. So we're going to have to see how things go there, but we're not talking Thunder basketball. Of course, we got to talk some Sooner football recruiting because Oklahoma and Zach Alley threw out an offer the other day to a linebacker here in the 2025 cycle. Pretty interesting and something I think we need to look at and talk about the impact of what this could mean for Oklahoma for some of their linebacker targets here in the 2025 cycle and what they could potentially land. But before we dive into it, before we discuss it, I need to hear from y'all. So make sure you join the discussion. Jump down in the comments below. Give me your thoughts, your opinions, because honestly, with the linebacker room, since Brenton Venables has came to Oklahoma, it's been completely changed. I mean, think about it. In 2022, he flipped Kobe McKenzie from the University of Texas to Oklahoma. And Kobe McKenzie, although he hasn't necessarily panned out the way I think a lot of Oklahoma fans expected, uh, Kobe McKenzie still has a ton of upside. You've seen Kip Lewis be in that room, and he's had some tremendous production. Danny Stutzman has taken a huge leap since BV's gotten here. Jaron Kanick. Not a refined product yet, but raw talent. Sammy Omasigo, Lewis Carter, Phil Picciotti, like all of these guys are extremely talented. Look at what Justin Harrington did last year. Perfect example. Now he's playing at another P4 school in Washington because, I mean, guys, I'd say it. Justin Harrington, great player, but the talent and the depth here in this linebacker room for Oklahoma, it's a lot. But Oklahoma threw out an offer to a 2025 prospect the other day. And a lot of you guys might have seen this. You might be aware of it. But Zadarius Rainey Sell, and I hope I got that right. Um, three names, all in one. Got to love it. How to span away Washington. 6'2", 220 pounds. Same area you got Josiah Wagner from. Remember Josiah Wagner? Hit the transfer portal this cycle. Uh, 247 has him at the 181st player in the 247 composite rankings. He's the 111th player total in the 247 rankings. But on three, they have him at 126. ESPN has him at 201. Uh, Rivals currently doesn't have him ranked in their top players in the country. But this is a guy that interesting because he's got the size. He's in an area you recruited really well. When you go to 247, um, as you guys can see here, he's got predictions in favor of Washington, has only 19 offers. And it's weird. Like when you look at your film, you wouldn't imagine it would be just 19. Got a lot of talent. We're going to dive in that here in a second. But Florida State, Washington, UCLA, Arizona State, Alabama has thrown an offer out to him. Miami's got an offer out to him. Oregon's got one. Penn State. So obviously there's some elite schools that do really good things at the linebacker position that have offered him. And if you're an Oklahoma fan, I think that's got to be kind of exciting a little bit. Uh, looking at what he's been able to do on the field, though, uh, 68 total tackle or 68 solo tackles in his career, 118 total tackles, uh, 11 and a half tackles for loss. He has had eight sacks. He hasn't had any QB hurries. Not a huge deal when you look at linebackers. You more so want to see that with defensive end and defensive linemen. Uh, he's played a little bit on the offensive side of the ball as well, so outside linebacker and tight end. But Zadarius, I think, is becoming your plan for if you don't land Dawson Merritt, right? And if you all have been a part of Jay's Discord, uh, you all remember we have talked about Dawson Merritt. And we've talked about the potential for Oklahoma to land him over schools like Alabama and Nebraska and Missouri. And uh, definitely, like, I think Missouri is going to continue to push. I don't care what anybody says. Like, Missouri is going to continue to push for a guy like that. They want to be able to keep guys in their area or even in their own state, like, close to home. And Missouri can come up late. So I'm never going to count Missouri out for a kid like that. Alabama, they've had a really good relationship with him. And I think that's something to note, Kalen Bohr and that staff. So I'm watching Alabama probably as the team that leads currently. Uh, you've got Nebraska in there. Matt Rule, like, he's got those defenses, right? They're, they're gritty. Dawson Merritt would fit perfect there. But if you don't land Dawson Merritt, uh, what do you currently have at the linebacker position? I, I, I've, I've, I've heard some of you guys say Marcus James, this guy that we took. Like, um, I'd be interested to see if he actually plays linebacker for Oklahoma or where they actually decide to use him. Because I think, if I remember correctly, 
uh, when you go look him up in the 247 database, I think he's listed as an athlete. But Marcus James is there. Zadarius would be a really good pickup. Top 150 player. He's got a lot of raw talent. He has an eye to be able to keep his eye on where the ball carrier is, right? And multiple times you've seen him be able to come in, find the holes, get inside those gaps, and get the tackle, right? So, interesting take here. And there's some other prospects that Oklahoma's sent offers out to, including another one that kind of has an official visit already out for Oklahoma. But Oklahoma's missed on some other linebacker targets. You got to remember, like, like, this isn't one of their top targets they've been following all year long. Like, they had Riley Pettijon really early in the recruitment. Uh, at one point, I heard somebody say they were trying to go after Botang, uh, which sounds like that might be a Georgia win. Uh, obviously, Dawson Merritt, who's the number eight linebacker in the country, but number 60 overall in the 247 composite rankings. Uh, you got Christian Jones out of the state of Nebraska and Omaha. Um I'm following up with the source there. I thought OU was out of it for a while, so but I just got to do some due diligence there. Um, I don't think Oklahoma's in that one, so I wouldn't expect it. Uh, Ty Jackson is another guy that's been on campus before. Uh, Jaden Harmon, you guys remember him? We made a whole video on that guy. He committed to Alabama. So um, Christian Thatcher, Weston Port, like those are all names that you've heard before. Uh, either Oklahoma's moved on or they're just kind of out of that race in terms of the kid's perspective. So. The only other names that I would say you would watch at the linebacker position, um, maybe, like I said, Christian Jones, depending on exactly what happens in that recruitment, uh, Dawson Merritt, and then, of course, the kid that currently has an OV scheduled uh, for the 21st or the 23rd in 23rd in Kamar Archie. Uh, Kamar Archie is out of Hun School in Princeton, New Jersey, which – you're probably familiar with that school if you've watched this podcast before because that's the school where you got Logan Howland from. Uh, currently, Cole Breeler is from there, and he's going to be on an OV on the same date. Uh, this would be, I think, his second visit to Oklahoma. Uh, Kamar came here on April 22nd as well, um, according to On3 um, and their um, visitor, like, you know, where the kids actually went. So... Of course, when you go look at their prediction machine, they have Rutgers on there. Um, I don't think for a top talent like that, Rutgers would be getting him. Uh, I would imagine more of like a Penn State or Michigan who's on that list. Uh, but Rutgers has gotten seven visits. Penn State's gotten five. So if you're Oklahoma, like you're right there. And another thing that's important is Clemson has an offer out to this kid. Uh, he went to visit Clemson on March 9th. And the big thing is Clemson, even without BV and the staff, like they're still recruiting defensive players really well. So that's something to potentially keep in mind. So backup insurance plan here for Oklahoma. It's going to be interesting to see exactly how this linebacker room shapes up. Uh, it's something that I've kind of came to the conclusion of, I don't know if they take another linebacker in this class. Uh, you don't really need one. Like your linebacker room is so deep. Like if you don't, take another one you probably don't lose anybody in the transfer portal i would bet because danny stutzman's going to be on his way out um you've got some rising guys so it's going to be interesting but guys if you have made it this far and you have not already make sure you hit that like you hit that subscribe button uh, jump in the comments below join the discussion give me your thoughts your opinions on what just brent venables as a whole has done with this linebacker room since he's came to oklahoma because i don't think we've seen a linebacker this linebacker room this good since BV left OU. So uh, definitely something Oklahoma fans have been looking forward to.